This evening, uh, uh, as we begin our meeting, I want to talk about a text in Hebrews, the third chapter, verses 12 through 14. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest there be in any of you... Uh, be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin, for we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Now the apostle, in writing to the Hebrews in our text, writes this exhortation couched in a reminder of the circumstances surrounding their ancestors in the wilderness. See, he knew um, by what happened to Israel that it's actually possible to be granted a miraculous deliverance over your enemies and be set in the direction of the promised land, so to speak, and not many days later be found at the foot of the mount being dancing around this golden calf singing, these be the gods that brought us out of the land of Egypt. He knew that this is actually possible. So the apostle, in writing to them, was, was warning them of the danger of this very thing happening to them spiritually. So he writes them, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you this, this same kind of evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. So as we meet together this evening, brethren, um, we meet together because we are not ignorant of this wilderness which we are currently traveling through in this life. As we begin our meeting this evening, I want to exhort you, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So we, we've experienced great strides of growth and blessing here as of late. We, we've been encouraged and we've been built up. The brethren have had growth in the ability to express and proclaim the truth. And in light of these things, you can be sure that the wicked one will be on the initiative to seek and to cause complacency and the and cooling of this zeal. I want to alert you, brethren, to be on the lookout for these things. No matter how high of a plateau we have reached, as long as we are in the body, there's never a time when it's appropriate for us to let off of the throttle, so to speak. There's no one who is exempt from this danger and the, this liability, no matter how advanced we are in the faith. I say this for my own benefit as much as anyone else's. As I was considering... Um, what I ought to, pr to present to the brethren this past week, I was provoked by this text. I know in times past that um, I, I perceive that the wicked one has thrown this dart in my direction, that if, if I've made quite a b bit of progress, uh, you know, you can just take a break. You can, you can just coast on that progress for a while. That, that is a deadly thought. When that, when that, if that thought comes to you, that's a deadly thought. So the, the apostle warned specifically, lest any of you be hardened. And I, I saw this from kind of a different perspective than I have before in times past. I always thought of being hardened uh, as just of being very hard. But um, in this context, to be hardened is just to lose sensitivity. See, nobody becomes very hardened against God overnight. It, it happens slowly over time. The, the apostle warns us to make sure that none of us even begins this hardening process. So he, he continues, For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Uh, this perspective of salvation that we are made partakers of Christ is something that we all must be constantly aware of. Although it's true that we are, we have been made partakers of the divine nature and that we are in fact in Christ, it's something that, that has to be maintained and increased in. It's only true as we are continually abiding in Him. See, He is the vine and we are the branches, and it is only as we abide in Him that we bring forth much fruit. Also, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end, it doesn't matter what you do along the way, and, uh, 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 unless unto the end you are faithful. However, this being said, in addition to seeing this text as the obvious exhortation that it is, this evening as we open our meeting, I, I would like to look at this as a promise. See, we, we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. This is, this is a promise. If we are faithful, if we hold fast the confident, expectant hope that the Lord has delivered unto us, there is nothing in this world that can stop us from obtaining what the Lord has for us. If, if we're faithful, if we hold fast, 
If we live in expectation of the things to come by the hope of the gospel and by the faith that was once delivered to the saints, if there is no power in heaven or on earth that can stop the Lord from doing what he has promised and continually conforming us into the image of his son. That's something that you can bank on this evening, brethren, that the Lord will do what he has promised. If, if, if you um, stop... If you um, keep yourself from hindering influences and press forward in the faith, he will do what he has promised. Amen. So let's let's open our meeting with thinking of these things this, this evening. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this evening, Lord, for, for this word from the Apostle, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to be able to... Um, be aware of the, the devil's devices, Lord. Uh, that we, we thank you for the increase that you have granted unto us as of late, Lord. And you would help us to be able to be sensitive, Lord, to be able to maintain the sensitivity that you have granted unto us. We pray, Lord, that you would help the speakers who, who are going to speak this evening to be able to speak as oracles of you. You would allow us to be able to be of one mind and one spirit this evening, Lord, that we might be able to be built up in the most holy faith. This in your son's name we pray. Amen.